Red Ridge Mountains is a zone in vanilla World of Warcraft situated to the east of Elwyn Forest and south of the Burning Steps and is one of the most fondly remembered zones in all of Vanilla WoW. It serves as one of the big four zones comprising the human starting experience along with Elwyn, the starting zone, Westfall and Duskwood, and considering that I've already covered the zones which precede and succeed it, it is only appropriate that I cover this one to fill in the gap. The reason why I delayed making a video on this zone is because I consider the other two to be way more expansive and memorable and as such, I had more to say about them. See, I've always considered the Red Ridge Mountains as a bit of a respite between Westfall and Duskwood, where Westfall had you follow a massive questline of betrayal and moral complexity culminating in one of the best dungeons in the whole game, and Duskwood had you brave the horrors of undeath, necromancy and lycanthropy, the questing experience in Red Ridge in comparison feels smaller, which isn't to say that it's bad, quite the contrary, but it's just that you have to dig a little deeper into the zone to really understand why it's so fondly remembered. So in this video I'm going to do just that, and explore this zone, pointing out as many of its unique quirks and charms as I can to remind everyone why this zone is so iconic. First of all, when you enter Red Ridge Mountains through an area called the Three Corners, since it connects Elwyn, Red Ridge and Duskwood, you get a quest from a guard who asks you to report to the zone's main hub, Lakeshire. While the quest itself is whatever, it's just a breadcrumb quest, I really like the way the environment is shaped here because in order to get to Lakeshire, you have to walk around the small hill and when you do, the zone reveals itself before you with a big lake in the middle of a valley surrounded by the eponymous Red Ridge Mountains and the town of Lakeshire sitting on the shore. This picture has vividly ingrained itself in the minds of players who have quested through Red Ridge, and there's just something about the way Lakeshire looks, the big lake in the middle, the tranquil landscape and the familiar Elwyn Forest music which also plays here that makes this zone feel incredibly quaint and cozy. Every time I quest through Red Ridge and enter Lakeshire for the first time, I like to just pause for a while, and when the music hits just right, I crank up the ambience volume way up to hear the splashing of the waves and just chill on the pier or on the bridge just to soak in the atmosphere for a little bit before I continue on my journey. The zone's main geographical feature is a lake in the middle of it, which serves as a nice contrast between the dense forests of Elwyn and the barren plains of Westfall, and it's the only one of two lake zones in vanilla, the other being Loch Madan, but unlike the latter, it didn't get completely fucked up in Cataclysm, but we'll get to that later. This is also a good time to bring up one of the most fatal flaws in Lakeshire's geography, that being the Flightmaster. See, back in vanilla, the devs didn't yet have a fully fleshed out template for how to create questing hubs and villages, and because of that, there were a lot of design choices that you would never see in the modern game, one of them being the flight master being located far outside the town. Because the flight master was separated from the town by the bridge connecting the two sides of the lake, they were also separated from the town guards, and as such, the Lakeshire flight master was probably one of the biggest hotspots in the entire game for Horde players camping Alliance newbies. I'm sure that if you've ever played Classic or Vanilla as Alliance and quested through Red Ridge, you would receive an obligatory ass clapping from a level 60 undead rogue named something like XX Sneaky Stabs XX. It was like a rite of passage for low level Alliance players to be christened in their own blood and what for many was their first experience of player versus player combat. Although you can hardly call it combat when you got vaporized quicker than you could blink, let alone put up a fight against someone 40 levels higher than you. Anyways, when you finally enter Lakeshire, you're immediately bombarded with a lot of yellow exclamation marks as many of the citizens of the town are desperate for aid and it's here where the zone's story really begins, and Lakeshire itself feels very warm and welcoming, almost as if it's a reward for braving the malnourished plains of Westfall and the insalubrious Sentinel Hill. Many of the quests are quite basic and are what you'd expect from ordinary people asking you for favours, and I keep saying this in every single one of these videos, but having simple quests like go bring a soldier some lunch or go to Stormwind to ask for the price of shoes is what made vanilla leveling so iconic, making you feel like a simple adventurer who has just recently enlisted to help the Alliance 
And while by this point you have had your first taste of real adventure, you're now starting to feel like a bit of a wandering hero, traveling from one impoverished village to another and helping bring aid and peace across the ailing kingdom of Stormwind. And despite being simple, some of these quests are very memorable, like the quest from the innkeeper who asks you to go around every zone in Stormwind and collect various alcohols to replenish a stock, or the quest from the little girl on the pier who asks you to dive to the bottom of the lake to retrieve a necklace, because you can't have a big lake and not have a quest where you dive to the bottom of it to retrieve something. But these basic errands aren't the only thing to do here in Redridge, because while the ordinary citizenry needs your help, so does the army and the government. Magistrate Solomon is the guy who runs Lakeshire, and from him you learn of the two biggest troubles that plague his domain, namely the Knolls, who by now you've become well acquainted with, and the Orcs. Narratively, this is the first time that Alliance players encounter the Orcs, however, these aren't the playable, green-skinned Orcs of the New Horde. These orcs belong to the Blackrock clan, who in turn belong to the Dark Horde, who are one of my favourite factions and wow and could warrant a video of their own someday, but which offshoot of the horde these ashy skinned fiends belong to doesn't really matter to Stormwind, they don't discriminate like that. To them, the only good orc is a dead orc, and considering that these holdouts of the second war have been raiding Red Ridge in increasing frequency, Solomon requires your aid. The reason why so much emphasis is placed on the Blackrock Orcs and why I'm covering them so extensively is because they play a major role later in the game, and having them play a part in the game's narrative so early on kind of sows that seed in players' minds. And you can see this represented physically if you dare venture into the far north of the zone, at the border between Red Ridge and the Burning Steps, in the aptly named Blackrock Pass, where the rich soil of Red Ridge gives way to death desolate, ash-covered ground where all vegetation withers and dies. At the end of this path is a broken gate which leads directly into the Burning Steps, an endgame zone in Classic where Black Rock Mountain towers over the landscape, definitely in some way inspired by the Black Gate of Mordor and Mount Doom. What I like about this little transition area is how much it tells you without saying anything. No quest during leveling in Red Ridge leads you here, and no one tells you that behind this gate is one of the highest level zones in Classic, and yet, the way the gate looks, the shifting landscape, the ominous music, you just know that you're not meant to cross this path yet. And because high level Blackrock Orcs can be found around the area where the gate is, you can probably conclude that this is where they spill out of, and you know that far into the future, you'll be the one taking the fight to them, but for now, your task as a neophyte adventurer is to root the Blackrock clan out of Red Ridge. After a few regular kill quests, you progress onto Stonewatch Keep, which could be considered as a sort of outdoor dungeon. Think Jintha Alor in the Hinterlands, but smaller. And it is here where you have to kill the commanders of the Blackrock Orcs of Red Ridge, Tharil Zun and Gath Ilzog, along with their entourage. In vanilla, the mobs in Stonewatch Keep were all elites, and as such, required a whole group of adventurers to defeat, so the Red Ridge general chat would always be full of people asking for help with these quests. It was a nice way of tying up this questline by having you and a group of adventurers brave this area, and showing that these orcs posed a genuine threat to the alliance, as well as introducing players to elite-only areas, which would always play a significant role in the zones where they appeared. Unfortunately, in TBC, the whole area was made non-elite, save for the final boss, which diminished the sense of danger and adventure, and removed the need to group up for these quests, making it just another generic questing area where you go and pick the mobs off one at a time until you finally reach your intended target, and put the threat of Blackrock Orcs and Redridge to rest, at least for some time. The Blackrock Orc Menace isn't the only plot thread of Red Ridge which reappears later on in the game. As during questing here, you will also embark on another small questline for Solomon as a messenger, where he asks you to deliver pleas for military aid to the People's Militia of Westfall, the Night Watch of Duskwood, and the Stormwind Army directly. This little questline is memorable because it strengthens the narrative of Stormwind being an ailing kingdom, stretched too thin to even defend its own lands, and over time, as Solomon receives one polite declination after another, the two of you realize that a fatal flaw lies somewhere deep within the government, which paralyzes its military and makes the kingdom weak and vulnerable. 
Much later on in the game, you discover what was causing this political and economic instability in the kingdom, but for now, all you know is that there is something suspicious going on, and once again, you have this plot thread in the back of your mind as you adventure through the world of Warcraft. This questline and its implications really exemplify the fact that these four zones were the first ones to be added to WoW, as their narratives are very consistent and they tie into one another very well, and these big questlines like the Defias Brotherhood, Solomon's Messenger, or the Legend of Stalvin are so well remembered by players because despite being their own stories, they all take place in this connected cluster of zones that really feels like an actual kingdom, as I don't think there's anywhere else in Classic WoW where a group of zones feels this interesting connected, at least not during leveling. The last questline of at least moderate significance is the Null Threat. At this point, you have become well acquainted with the Nulls, having dealt with them in both Elwyn and Westfall, however, these Nulls seem a lot more present throughout Red Ridge and a lot more organised. That's because they're led by the evil wizard Morganth, the other quote-unquote boss of the zone, dwelling in his Tower of Ilgalar. After completing some kill quests and dispatching the Null Commander of the area, you somehow have to find out that the continuation of this questline occurs in Elwyn Forest, at the Tower of Azora, so many people probably missed the conclusion to this questline because I don't remember there being any breadcrumbs or hints that you're meant to go back to your starting zone to complete this questline, but for those who did, the three of you who paid attention to the story during Vanilla find out that Morganth is after the Scythe of Elune, which is a nice foreshadowing of the next zone on your journey, Duskwood. You then, of course, go to the tower, kill all his minions on your way up the tower, and eventually kill him, quelling yet another threat to Red Ridge. And that's about it for the significant quests in the Red Ridge Mountains. As for the notable locations, I've already covered the two biggest, Lakeshire and Stonewatch Keep, as well as some minor ones like the Three Corners and the Blackrock Pass. The only other memorable location in Red Ridge is the tarantula-infested Author's Mill, where rogues are introduced to the wonders of leveling up their lockpicking skill, since in vanilla, you had to learn everything yourself, nothing just came to you. An aspect of the game that many people miss, which added a flavorful RPG element to the game, but at the same time created a lot of unnecessary frustration, because do I, as a high level character, really have to go all the way back to Elwyn to whack grey level wolves and defias bandits for half an hour just because my character has never wielded a polearm before? And before I end this video, I just want to briefly mention the Cataclysm world revamp and the impact it had on this zone. Thankfully, not much was changed, as Blizzard seemed to be aware of how dear this place was to many players' hearts, so apart from a couple of unfunny Rambo-inspired quests, and that one annoying quest that gave you an Eton follower so you would always see people walking in and out of Lake Shy with a giant two-headed monster behind them, which kind of ruined the immersion of this place, they had the decency to mostly leave this place untarnished, unlike the other Lake Zone of Classic WoW. In conclusion, the Red Ridge Mountains are a small, quaint zone in Vanilla WoW, serving as a momentary respite between the larger zones of Westfall and Duskwood, and while in itself the zone didn't have as much memorable content as the zones it finds itself narratively sandwiched between, being part of the best leveling experience and the best version of the game allows it to share the podium and be spoken of in the same breath as the rest of the Kingdom of Stormwind, and be remembered mostly for its visuals and overall atmosphere, while also having some memorable quests. Its legacy was mostly left undisturbed, and when thinking about its sister zones, I think Redridge got away the most unscathed in the Cataclysm revamp, because while Westfall owes its memorability to an expansive, interzone leveling questline, and Duskwood to not only its atmosphere but also interesting mob pathing choices, both those things were done away with in the Cataclysm revamp, however, you can't really point a finger at exactly what made Red Ridge memorable, and as such, it was more difficult for Blizzard to ruin it. I think that if the future of Azeroth holds within it another revamp, I once again do not think that Red Ridge will see much change, apart from maybe it once again having some relevance to the overall narrative of the Kingdom of Stormwind. And the reason why I think and hope for that is because, while it's important for the game to change and evolve, seeing as this year it turns two decades old, it's nice to have some areas that remain anchored in what made the game appealing in the first place. Which is a very roundabout way of asking Blizzard not to mess it up by draining the big lake in the middle.